The postseason has arrived on this Friday night. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to play the game the way it should be played. Though many area teams will wait an extra day to start their run. For those that take the field this evening, it's winner go home time. Local rematches highlight the opening week. The playoffs start now on the Blitz. This is Action Sports Jack's Friday Night Blitz. Sponsored by Whataburger. Just like you like it. We said on Wednesday. It's guaranteed that this game is going to be played. But Monday is not guaranteed, gentlemen. Monday is not guaranteed. So what are you going to do for four quarters to make sure that you're practicing on Monday? Well, you got to win. That's what you got to do if you want to practice on Monday. Unless you're Mandarin, they didn't have to win. They're just going to have to wait until play Monday. On Monday. It's playoff time. And happy Friday night blitz in November. And here we go. A run to the state championship for many teams and a collision course for many others setting up some showdowns. Uh, coming up next week, potentially. Welcome to the wall that tells it all. And in this case, it tells us the path forward for all these playoff teams and for most especially the local teams. I'm Brent Martin. I'm Stuart Weber. For the majority of these teams, it's five wins and you get that trophy over there on your right. Uh, it all starts, of course, in week number one. Yeah, there it is right there over is. there. Uh, our first look at the new metro and suburban classifications. And now we see if the postseason looks any different, right? We, we Big question mark. It's our opinion that this time of year, Every game is game of the week. So yeah. let's get it started with one of our many games of the week. The game of the week, sponsored by Whataburger. Reigns has had Ed White's number the last few years. Commanders earning a home game, though, with their district title. First play from scrimmage. Commanders getting tricky. Tavales Thomas taking the handoff. He'll throw it to a wide open. Isaiah Washington, 69 yards later, he is gone. Ed White up 8-0 in the blink of an eye. The Vikings would respond 12 unanswered, six of them right here on a one-handed grab from Terrell Shepard. Vikings ahead 12 to eight in the first quarter. Let's go to the second. Commanders are back on offense. Devon Patterson plowing his way into the end zone. Retake the lead for the home team. But here come those Vikings. With less than a minute in the first half, Roman Doles into the end zone. They retake the lead. So Commanders attempt to take some momentum into the locker room at halftime, but it's gonna backfire. Nicholas Kilpatrick, Picking off the pass, and he is headed the other way. A lot of green jerseys in the way, but he navigates them nicely. That's a pick six. Wow, what a switch of momentum there. Reigns ahead 28-16 at the half. They go on to win it 34-22. to Let's hear from the winning head coach. All right, so our game of the week vibe switched to the playoffs as a new season. Coach, everybody 0 0. I'm here with Victoria's head coach Donovan Maslin, 34 22. I mean, you got to be proud of your whole team tonight. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, all week we talked about, um, you know, this week was guaranteed, but next week was not. And what are you going to do? You know, what are you going to do to earn the right to continue to play and practice next week? So much about football, especially getting into the postseason, about clicking at the right time. You know, you guys scored 30 points in five of the last six games. It looks like on offense and defense, you guys are clicking at the right time. Another great defensive game and offensive game. Yeah, uh, that's what we talked about, you know, just wanting to ride the momentum. Uh, and like we tell the kids, you know, if offense, you know, down, defense going to step up. Uh, you know, if defense is down, offense step up and make plays. And they showed tonight. Offense came out and responded each and every time. And then, of course, special teams, you know, we, we hang out having our special teams too. Uh, we've been on the on the negative side of some special teams plays. And uh, so we want to, we try to just make sure we take care of the small things and uh, it, it'll help us out in the end. We were joking earlier about you telling the team make sure that they remember the day they played the Vikings. I think they remember? Oh, they remember now. Definitely. Everybody. Awesome. Well, congratulations, Coach. Another week to go. A little more work for you, but I'm sure that, you know, you're happy about that. Oh, this is good work right here. No <laughs> complaints. Awesome. That's Victoria's head coach, Donovan Mazza. Reigns Vikings victory over Ed White. They're moving on, and we'll toss it back to you. Well, Reigns knows what it's all about to win this time of year. Take a mm -hmm. look at 2M Region 1. That's 2 Metro Region 1, and there you see Reigns and Ed White. I mean, these teams all pretty loaded. It could have gone either way. Yeah. That matchup and obviously Riverside and Jackson playing tonight as well. Yeah, the cool thing is all these rematches that we're getting, right? I mean, Episcopal Bulls is another rematch from teams within the same district. If Bulls and Bishop Kenny meet in the next round, that's another big rematch. So. 
plenty to see from all around the area here when you're talking about this 2M Region 1. BK, by the way, will play tomorrow night. Their game was moved to Saturday. A bunch of games, we'll get to that, of course, uh, on this wall that says it all, have been moved there. Uh, we're ready to see Riverside and Jackson. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. A rematch at Kevin Sullivan Field. This game was 6-2 to two in the regular season. <laughs> Maybe some more points. Hey, this is my favorite play. The truck, check this out. Throw the ball away. Watch number 57 on the sideline. He gets it, and then he's ready for some moves. Good hands, good moves. I mean, it didn't count as a play, but I loved it. Hey, it's 6 to nothing. Third quarter. Riverside in the lead. Jackson driving now down close to the 20-yard line. Picked off by Lavelle Marine, and he is gone 70 plus it looked like it was over at that point midway through the third quarter but wait a minute i left stewart well he said i'm going to main street man and what happened all right let's pick it up six minutes to go in the game riverside up i would watch this play develop devin herring to tayshawn gelsey oh unbelievable catch then he's in the middle of traffic he's got three red jerseys on him he keeps the legs moving reaches for the end zone and in touchdown makes it 20 to 13 so tigers get it under two minutes to go right off the rip huge play king johnson to fred Gaines. that's half the field right there on this drive they needed almost broke it by the way to take it in for the end zone but on a third and long jackson nice gain here over the middle clock ticking 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 under 15 seconds they didn't get the first down that was third down they lose track of downs they go for the spike mm, they thought it that was, was on down. fourth down and that is going to end the game 20 to 13 Riverside is moving on here's coach Antoine Nicholas relentless resilience uh, we fought through a lot of adversity and that's just been you know a testament for the character of our team as well as the talent we know we can play better than what we've been playing and we just continue to build week to week man a great program great team we playing here at Jackson and the generals will play on. We're playing so that we got another game, man. Yes, sir. We're playing so that season doesn't end. Yes, sir. We're playing for each other. We're playing for the seniors that don't want our season to end. Yes, sir. I'm not done with football. Let's go. All right, so another rematch from a district game, Episcopal and Bowles. Jack Pruden, he was fired up pregame. Well, first series of the game, he's into the backfield and gets the sack. Eagles starting strong. But game to play. Game to play, sure did. After an interception, Bulldogs, they're going to hand it off to Ty Neal. He is dragging defenders for the final five yards into the end zone. Seven, nothing at that point. More defense from Bowles now. And watch this as they stand the runner up. And it looks like Spencer surface maybe gets his helmet on the ball. It falls right to Jacob Campen, and that is a fumble recovery. So DJ Moore in a quarterback. Man, can he make some plays happen. Gets to the outside, and he is going to tight rope the sideline into the end zone. It was all bowls. 38-6 to six is your final score. And we talked about 2M Region 1, so take a look. It's going to be Riverside at Reigns next week. Bowles will either play at Bishop Kenny or host Bishop Moore. All right, let's head to McClenny now as Baker County gets set to start another playoff run. The Wildcats made it all the way to the state semifinals a year ago, and this new format, well, might be a benefit for teams like Baker County. Remember, we talked about that earlier in the year. So, Baker County beat Uly by one in the regular season. It was a late game thriller. Let's pick it up late in the first. Hornets quarterback Chris Turner throwing in the double coverage. That does not work out well. It rarely does, right? Seth Chestnut, interception, and he goes the other way. 14-0 Baker County at that point after the interception return for a touchdown. Third quarter, Uli's back against the wall and into the end zone. That is a sack and a safety. Makes it 16-0. Here come the Hornets trying that late comeback. Teontae Artis Croxton catch and into the end zone for six. But they would not get any closer. Your final score, Baker County Wildcats get the win. 16-6 over Uli and Baker County is moving on. And that's, we've talked about it all week. Uh, you know, we start with 32 teams and we're down to down to 16, and we're one of the 16. So we're happy to win. Again, we got to clean some stuff off. We got to keep kind of shooting ourselves in the foot. Uh, but a win's a win, and we're happy. We're happy to still be playing. That's a really good team. That's a really good team. Uh, you know, me and Kyle are from the same area. I've known him for a little while, and he, he's got a really good team. And by the way, Kyle Doherty, great job with you. Yeah, this good year. stuff there. In, all right, in Stark, the Bradford Tornadoes hosting Crescent City right from the jump. This thing was all tornadoes. Opening kickoff, Demetrius Pringle nearly gets swallowed up in the fray, but as the slogan goes, once you pop, 
you just can't stop. Pringle, Pringle's the last name. Nice. There he goes. Nice. Down the sideline, no one's going to catch him. Should have brought me Seven some. nothing tornadoes. I'm hungry too. Next, Brad for possession. Jeremiah McKenzie kind of likes the idea of a one play, one score, and he does it. 45 yard pass to Jaron Alexander. All Brad for 48 nothing is your final score. And you look at the Class 2S Region 2 bracket. Bradford will host Eastside next week. Baker County could head to Baldwin or host Palatka pending the Saturday matchup. So this is Bartram Trail. Yeah. Hosting Flagler Palm Coast. By the way, Bartram Trail undefeated this undefeated year, Undefeated right? coming into this Well, thing. maybe a little bit of surprise in the first quarter, folks. DJ Murray, 63 yards for the touchdown. How about this? 14 to nothing, Flagler Palm Coast. That sent shockwaves throughout the state. It I did. Tell I was looking at my phone. I was surprised. Back come the Bears. A good run for the first down by Lathan Biddle. They did not panic. And something turned the switch on because Biddle's been doing that all year. And he continued to do that. They would get a touchdown a short time later to cut into there it the is lead. right here. Biddle takes More it Biddle. in. Biddle left, Biddle right, Biddle up the middle. Then Riley Trujillo to Jaden Weatherly. Remember that Weatherly name at Bartram. <laughs> and run for a touchdown, yeah. take the lead, 21-14. 37 to nothing run. No, how about make it a 50 to nothing run at one time? Oh. 50 to 20 was the final. Well, it really wasn't so much about making adjustments as everybody just continuing to try and do their jobs. You know, they're a very good football team. They came out and made some plays early, and then I was really proud of the way our guys responded. This group truly loves each other, and they truly care about each other's success. I almost feel like they'd rather see one of their teammates succeed than they would themselves, and, and that's when special things can happen. Hey, it's a long trip to the Panhandle for a couple of our area teams, including Creekside. They broke up the trip with a stop in Tallahassee for a little quick stretch and walkthrough at the Florida State Seminoles indoor practice facility. And they'd eventually reach Navarre for their regional quarterfinal matchup. Creekside already had 7-0. Sean Ashenfelder going to go along to Brendan McMillan. That's a big gainer. 34 yards led to a field goal. 10-zip. Creekside's defense throttling the running game in Navarre. Anthony Brummel, tackle for a loss. Then in the second quarter, it's Ashenfelder. And this time he is going to keep it himself and follow his blockers into the end zone as they go ahead 17 nothing. How about one more time from Ashenfelder fakes the handoff and 49 yards later he is into the end zone. Knights ahead 24 to nothing. This is one of those games still going on out in the panhandle. Just finished quarter number three, 44 to 20 Creekside in the lead. All right, good stuff there. So the playoffs only just beginning tomorrow. Another busy day. Uh, here's a few of the matchups pushed back a day. It's Fletcher, Bishop Kenny, St. Augustine, Baldwin, all hosting games at 6 o'clock on Saturday night. That extra day of game prep, allowing a few coaches to call in and discuss the process on ESPN 690, the Blitz Scoreboard Show tonight. It's been um, an interesting week. Our, our kids have done a nice job of adapting, um, you know, with uh, a little bit of break in there. But, um, yeah, looking forward to tomorrow night. It's going to be you know, nice weather. Our field's in really good shape, so we're uh, excited to get a chance to play. That's Tim Krause from Bishop Kenny. They could get a rematch with Bowles if they take care of business tomorrow. But scoreboard show each and every Friday night, 9 p.m. until 10.30. Uh, catch it on social media. Catch it on ESPN 690. Catch the show 3 p.m. until 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Everywhere says once a whatever, always a whatever. But when people say once a jacket, always a jacket, this is the one true place that I've felt that that is real. Uh, Stewart was down at Burden of the Shoes in St. Augustine today, and it is the coolest tradition I think I've ever seen, really, <laughs> covering high school sports in 20-plus years, and they do it annually at St. Augustine. Yeah, the seniors step up, talk to their fellow teammates, and they burn the shoes because no one's ever going to walk the same footsteps that they did on that campus. Good stuff there. Hey, welcome back to the Friday Night Blitz. We've hit the Florida schools. Let's go to Georgia now, shall we? And let's talk about the Charlton County Indians looking to add another state Think championship plaque to the wall. <laughs> they sure have, and they host the Seminole County Indians in round one of the playoffs. First quarter, it is Charlton County in the red zone. Quarterback Jalen King hands it off to Jalen Lilly. Jalen to Jalen into the end zone first score of the game. Second quarter, same score. And here's Charlton County back in Seminole territory. King dropping back and fires it to Jamari Hamilton. That's another touchdown and Charlton County wins in a blowout. 44 to nothing. They are moving on and will host again next week. Pirates play host to Houston County in the first round of GHSA playoffs. And 
I mean, why do you spell it like Houston? Second and nine, J.R. Elkins connects with Terry Mitchells along the far sideline, turns up field for a 60-yard gain before he gets pushed out of bounds. Now, keep in mind here, Brunswick undefeated, undefeated. in the regular season. 10 and 0 regular season. A couple plays later, Wildcat formation, direct snap to Jaden Drayton, and a second effort gets Brunswick on the board first, seven and nothing. Just before half, though, Houston rips off a big run after some celebration. They gotta celebrate. Here and comes the big run after the pass. Oh, we got a hook and a ladder. Wow, I saw we one tonight hook and a as well. But then we're going to get a fumble. I think we're going to get a fumble. We've got to get a fumble. I think it's going to be a fumble. There's, There's a, fumble. a fumble. That prevents the touchdown. But here's the deal. Houston wins in overtime. They went, beat Brunswick. Big went, upset. Went for two in overtime and win at 29 to 20. Lynn Academy at Northside. Warner Robbins quarterback Tyler Devlin sees daylight. Stricken down the sideline. There he goes, and he's going to score. The north side lead got cut to five, 18 to 13, but that's as close as it would get. Glenn out of the postseason. So, two more Georgia teams playing on Saturday Camden County and Ware County will both be at home as the Georgia playoffs roll on. The Player of the Week, sponsored by Whataburger. All right, big congrats to our final player of the week winner this year, Sim Milton from Nice. He had five touchdowns last week in that season-closing win for the Nice Panthers. Good stuff. More games to get you in Region 2 of Class 3A Suburban. It's the Fighting Tigers of Columbia hosting Lincoln out of Tallahassee. Dimitri Jackson and company trying to avoid a first-round exit for a second straight year. First play of the game, Tyler Jefferson deep to where only FSU wow. commit Camden Fryer Look can catch it. That Mossing a pair Camden. of defenders. How about an 80-yard <laughs> touchdown to start things off? It's 6-0 Columbia. The lead in Lake City was 23 to nothing in intermission. They go on to win. Your final score there, 29 to 6. Columbia well. gets the win. They go on the road next Friday for their next round. Middleburg at Pensacola Escambia, two at-large teams, and the Gators are at home. So a long trip for T.J. Lane and Middleburg. First quarter quarterback Jaden Jabo Jenkins hands it off to that T.J. Lane, just like we were talking about, and he breaks free. It gets a, a big chunk of yardage. That run sets up Middleburg for this touchdown, and the Broncos would strike first, but Escambia strikes a lot, 42-18. to 18. Broncos. Terrific season, but they fall short. All right, how about your play of the week? This is Devin Herring, and he's rolling to his left, finds Tayshawn Gelsey, catches it, first Good of catch. all, great catch, and then runs in the traffic, keeps his legs moving. They try to strip the ball away. Instead, he scores a touchdown. Riverside, huge upset over Jackson, 20-13. to 13. We take you out to the wall that tells it all. Quick recap of some of the events of the evening. Riverside wins. Reigns wins. They will be playing at the graveyard next week. Bowles gets a win. Could get that rematch with Bishop Kenny. Bartram Trail, Creekside next week. Most likely. Creekside trying to finish it off in the fourth quarter Correct. at Navarre. So we have some big rematches Ooh. coming up next week, potentially. Even uh, maybe a Baldwin-Baker County. Uh, that'd next be a good one, too. As well. All right, let's leave you with the band of the week. A fun first night of the playoffs in high school football. And, uh, well, we'll be here until the long haul. Most teams hope to as well. On to <laughs> the state championship run it goes over the next month. Keep winning, everybody. Thanks for watching Action Sports Jack's Friday Night Blitz. Sponsored by Whataburger. Just like you like it. On Fridays, the sound of high school football echoes through the night. And the Blitz is bringing those sounds to life. This is our field. Let's go and get them. More passion. More highlights. More coverage of the best games on Friday nights. Action Sports Jack's Friday Night Blitz. Friday at 1030 on Fox 30. Sponsored by Whataburger. Just like you like it.